Um, so I just wanted to quickly have you each introduce yourselves, um, you know, say which company you're from, and uh, a little bit about what your company's doing, um, just briefly before we get into the questions, uh, maybe some of your own background. So we'll start with okay. Stefan. So my name is Stefan Bauer, so I'm coming from Audi. I'm heading a department that is taking care of, um, let's say, collecting and processing all the data our cars are producing during the usage of the car. So we primarily building up a platform which should be able to be very flexible and to handle a lot of data so that we will be able to make good new products for our customers. So personally, I'm with Audi since, I guess, 15 years. So we are, have a history in software, of course, mainly in embedded software, and now we are spreading out into the backend software as well so that the car is part of the IoT world. Yeah, I'm Hubert Fischer, also from Audi. I'm the uh, senior project manager of the IoT project collecting vehicle sensor data. Um, I've been in several uh, projects before within the company, and now I'm part of the transition the company goes through from a pure hardware developing company to an IoT company. Hello, my name is Oliver Goldig uh, from Deutsche Telekom. I'm a manager in the networks and uh, service area. Uh, we are using DCOS in particular and this Mac stack for uh, creating more value for our customers in terms of selecting access networks. So we're, I can briefly uh, in, give more updates later, but uh, yeah, we're using this Mac stack for that. Yeah, good morning. My name is Christian Worps. I'm product architect uh, within ASML. So I'm doing this for a project which is a compute and uh, data platform. Um, we are, I think, quite new in the SMAC stack. So we started uh, beginning of this year. And we are not using all of the uh, letters right now. And so I'm eager to learn and uh, exchange uh, information uh, throughout the next two days. So, Great. Uh, so we'll start again with you. Um, I sort of wanted to ask, as much as you can share about your infrastructure with regard to what technologies you're using, the size of the infrastructure, um, whatever you're comfortable with sharing, I'm sure many in the audience would be interested to know. Yeah. Um, um, for us, the challenge is we are a um, Dutch equipment manufacturer which are sending out uh, machines to our customers. And um, these machines are operating and creating a tremendous amount of data. And our compute platform now needs to be able to properly scale in compute and uh, storage, but also needs to be able to properly actually um, tackle individual failure modes down to cross data center availability. And um, that's, um, we have chosen uh, Mesos for an infrastructure that we can actually operate the compute and the data capabilities. So we are, um, of that stack, we are using uh, Mesos and the Kafka part. We are heading out to the Spark computations uh, in the future. And um, yeah, that's what we are chosen from. Cool. Oliver, what do we, can you tell us about Deutsche Telekom? <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, we had a problem that we started about uh, two years ago. I think everyone knows it, at least we have all the Wi-Fi password here uh, on our badge, but actually we try to automate that so that our customers can get into Wi-Fi networks, but with a good, very good quality. So if the Wi-Fi is really poor, you don't get there. Uh, so what we uh, started to build is a mobile application that collects enormous amount of uh, information about the access networks you're facing as a customer, and uh, we want to give recommendations uh, to uh, on a mobile application deployed, um, up which X networks you, uh, you are uh, going to be steered. And this was quite a challenge to go with an uh, old stack infrastructure. And uh, since we're, we expect a bigger uh, customer base uh, come there, the distributed way of how the SMAC stack is uh, designed gives us quite a lot of opportunities here. Yeah, so we have, only, um, we have millions of cars out there um, equipped with um, onboard com communication units for data collecting. Um, so they're listening to the bus systems in the car um, and sending uh, those uh, data generated out to a backend. Um, so backend is our 
um, a project uh, to set up. Uh, we use all the five letters of this Mac stack um, uh, to ingest those data, to do uh, real-time analytics of those data uh, coming in, um, identifying patterns and uh, cause reactions back in the car to the customer. Um, and we do um, use Spark for, the, uh, for that um, a s a specific purpose. Um, the whole infrastructure is currently based on Amazon, but we have the approach to be and to stay cloud agnostic. And for that, um, DCOS helps us a lot um, yeah, to spread the load between different cloud providers to get a perfect exploitation um, of the cloud resources, which are expensive. Um, and uh, we stay independent from any cloud provider so we can um, uh, switch from one to, to another um, in using um, uh, DCOS. Great. Um, Maybe let me add some, some more aspects. Um, as we are a global company, for us it's very, very important to also to have global solutions. And for that, we know uh, there are different countries where maybe we can use Amazon, or maybe we, we are not able to use, maybe when you look to China, there is always a little bit, let's say, legal uh, uncertainty uh, what you can do. So what is very, very crucial to be able to independently from, from, the, from the single uh, infrastructure, infrastructure provider and even to have the possibility to make some hybrid uh, solutions as uh, part of the Volkswagen Group. We also have in a lot of internal uh, capacity for, for data centers. So in future, I, I have in mind that we really could use both internal and external data center for this purpose. Great. Um, so I think I heard a little bit from, from a couple of you um, using the full SMAC stack. So that's uh, Spark, Mesos, Akka, uh, Cassandra and Kafka. So you guys are using all the letters, I think, most of the panel yes. here. And then uh, you're using three of them, right? Yeah. OK. Um, so I guess specifically speaking to the SMAC stack and the collection of technologies that is, um, what has that on the application level? Um, you've touched upon that a little bit, but is, if there's anything you'd like to add, um, what has that specific data-driven um, pipeline done for you? Well, for us, I guess the most important thing is uh, the fast, the fastness, uh, as we want to do our analytics very real time. So we really want to, to go out and to, to go into the field of being able to react immediately uh, on situations that are happening in a single car. And for that, we, we have to be able to, to know what's happening outside and to be able to, to get the knowledge that we gathered from, from the, the rest of the fleet uh, to be able to send directly to the single car. So that's crucial for us. Yeah, and, and next to the whole analytic stuff, um, it's um, important for us not to lose any data. Yeah. If you can imagine, we have um, millions of cars sending in seconds uh, millions of data. Um, so we need some kind of infrastructure uh, which is capable of uh, collecting those data and not losing any of those. Yeah, sure. And just to add, the distributed workloads are quite an advantage of the Smack stack. Oh, and especially if you don't have customers there, you can really scale down the infrastructure as well, which is not so poor, it's not so bad as well. Yeah, which uh, sort of leads me into my next question. Um, we'll start over there. It's sort of that, that's talking about the application level, but also the infrastructure level. Um, how using containers and DCOS and Mesos and the Smack stack has really um, has that helped you, um, you know, build out your infrastructure and plan for the future? Um, if you could speak to that a little bit, if you. So yeah. So what we are uh, looking forward to, and what also the last year of that project has shown, that we gain actually the capability and the flexibility to scale, to have the high availability, um, to also dynamically use and reuse the resources that are on the hardware level available for our applications. And what we build within our compute and data platform is the foundation for the applications that are built on top of that. So also we are providing a middle layer towards our application uh, developers, actually. Sure, and just to add, this was not an easy road to get everything in the containers, <laughs> but yeah, so. Did you do it incrementally, or did you do it like one big uh, switch We build it completely new. New one? Because it, the mind shift is uh, quite hard. Well, telcos maybe sometimes uh, occur to be a little bit old fashioned. So when I started the project, we asked, yeah, and where's the VM? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, and then talking about containers, uh, we're looking uh, forward to, to software-defined networking and software-defined mm. uh, storage. So that would be a, a really good good next step for the whole Smack stack. So as you're, as you're looking, you know, we've got a lot of people in the audience who are planning on moving to the Smack stack or are just getting started. Um, if you could talk about some of the challenges or um, successes that you've had um, in your migration over to a Smack stack that people can benefit from. I guess one we have in our in our history, I always could recommend uh, try to start on a greenfield um, to to really get up from from the scratch to to be able to to get all the advantages you, you get out of such a smack stack. Um, and the second issue is um, start with some POCs, of course, on a, on a, on open source basis. But we really want to to be in the enterprise level. So for, for our companies, we are big companies here on, on the on the uh, in the round here. We, you need professional support. You need professional services. So as soon as possible, change to the enterprise versions. So it's, yes, it's 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 not it's not advertising here. Um, <laughs> I didn't tell him to say that. <laughs> no, <laughs> no or as as you see, uh, in our in our mind, when you go to to my board and say, okay, you, you you're introducing new a new architecture, new software. So where's the support structure? Who could we call when something is going wrong? How, what, what about a downtime? What about some issues, some bugs, whatever? Uh, because a lot of the board members think open source is something for freaks, uh, something for, yeah, you can do it in, in your, uh, at your home uh, based uh, software development, but nothing for enterprise. So to, to, to convince them that it's a professional way of working, enterprise versions are very helpful. So to quickly go back to Greenfields, um, did you have existing infrastructure that you had to move over? Or were you able to really to start with a fresh project? Yes, we were lucky and had and we were able to start with a fresh project. Okay. So with a with a clean Amazon infrastructure. Yeah. Um, to add there, uh, we had the same challenge. Uh, we needed to convince uh, our management that we don't go with our operations team, but rather deploy it on Azure because we're faster in Doing a, using a public cloud service, and we directly started with the premium support uh, with the premium enterprise licenses, and uh, it was just easier with the support of the vendor. And we iterated very in very small cycles. This helped us a lot, not to go too far, <laughs> just one step ahead. And did you have a legacy infrastructure to move over at all, or were you starting from scratch? Everything new, yeah. Everything it's new. It's the easiest way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it is. Yeah. How about over? So yes, we we are two two way actually. Um, so we do have a hardware platform that we currently ship to our customers, where our software is running on. But we have to grow out of that uh, infrastructure. So we move into our customers' data center with the deployment of our platform. And the second aspect is that we do have to keep the investments that we had already to the compute stack. So we have to first. Uh, also create new processes together with our customers and close collaboration. And second, uh, we have to make sure that our investments stay still active on the compute level. So the migration that we did from the uh, Java enterprise world into a more fine-grained uh, containerized architecture, it works, it's doable. Um, and this is what we did in the past. Could you give a few more details about, or were there any challenges, specific things that you could give advice um, about the that, migration? Um, the two challenges, uh, it's a, also a new uh, software stack, mm -hmm. also within our organization. So you do have to do a lot of um, yeah, convincing people and showing that it really works. It's a different way of uh, doing the development. Um, but yeah, you have to do your homework in order to bring that to the proper audience. Um, it's also like a kind of uh, community management, you could say so. And the second aspect is on the customer side, uh, they also have the same challenges um, from moving the, uh, yeah, the ownership of that uh, hardware stack from the business people to their own IT department. That's also th things that you need to communicate. You have to be open there and yeah, it's doable. Yeah. Yeah, it's like we heard in, in the last talk, it's not just about the technology. Communication is, is really vital with these projects. Exactly, I can yeah. subscribe to that. <laughs> Maybe let me add communication and trust. 
So I think it's for us it was very helpful to to uh, that we really uh, could rely on our on our software developers and our architects to say, okay, this is the right way we want to move, and don't don't bother them with too many comparisons, too many POCs, too many. Oh, please, uh, could you could you give me some more insight why we exactly use this specific product and not those out of the 20 other products? Trust them. Okay. Um, and to add as well, one challenge that we had there is actually. Uh, you need a completely different skill set of people that can work um, on the Smack Stack. Uh, so it's quite challenging to find good people that are actually do the work. So that's that's really a hard one. That's the reason why we have an HR booth out there <laughs> <laughs> for some of you who are interested in. I mean, have you found you've been able to train some people internally already to get them up to speed? Yeah, or, yeah that's great. And last but not least, uh, we have to mention that it's uh, not purely a technical issue to do this shift. It's mostly a cultural um, a shift necessary in, in, in big companies um, and um, also a shift of, of the work mode, of the skill set, as you've already mentioned. So uh, there's lots more than pure technology. Yeah. One thing to add with regard to communication, I think uh, Ben yesterday in the DCS afternoon uh, had one sentence on, on its slides which talked about communication. And actually there was one um, subject that you could ex uh, change there with any kind of, uh, yeah, with any subject, but it all came down to communication as a key. Yeah. That's, that one I really liked. <laughs> <laughs> all right, um, so the last question I had for, for all of you is um, sort of a future looking one. Um, so we're, implementing the Smack Stack now, it's running well. Where do we see the Smack Stack in a few years? What is the Smack Stack 2.0? Um, do the, the ac does the acronym change? Um, what, what are you thinking? Maybe, um, but uh, for us, um, important uh, thing for Smack Stack uh, 2.0 is uh, to get uh, the stuff I've already mentioned, software-defined networking, software-defined storage, that, that's a, uh, would be a good thing, and um, the tight integration of the products together would also be a, a really a huge advantage for us to avoid downtimes uh, while migrating to, to higher versions and things like that. And that's that's the components inside the Smack Stack themselves, yeah, integration um, or the applicate other. Um, yeah, uh, the Smack Stack itself and each application within. Um, and uh, the other uh, thing around is uh, that um, we have to implement more and more components into that stack uh, regarding um, uh, AI um, capabilities. Um, uh, that's one of the crucial factors for us uh, to succeed um, in the matters of, of um, yeah, envisioning um, environment, uh, building uh, map layers uh, with real-time events on it uh, to, to let the car drive on its own in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Smack Stack, I guess, will not change. I can still download LAMP. Uh, probably the package still <laughs> different things in it, but the label sticks the same. Um, I think that the, a lot of the majority will do or will be done on the, on the infrastructure level, like new orchestration frameworks appearing. This is more where I see future uh, something's going to change. Looking into the future, I hope that there will be a Smack Enterprise version. <laughs> <laughs> so if you really build uh, products that are running at your customers, you have to take, take care about uh, maintainability, monitoring, security aspects, uh, encryption at rest and transit. And if you would like to add all this on your own, yeah, then you actually build the Smack Enterprise. <laughs> all right. Um. Thank you, everyone. This was great. <laughs>